today we're going to talk about the accelerating energy transitions and what we're talking about. And I say energy transitions intentionally. There's a lot changing in our energy system right now. So I'm showing you wind turbines here. I've even got my, my wind turbine earrings on uh, to get us going on the cool things that are happening. There's a lot changing in our energy landscape today. But we still do a lot of the things the way we've done them for a long time. These are the two largest energy systems today in the world, using oil for transportation, using coal for electricity production. Still the two largest energy systems in the world, very inefficient. We use heat engines as part of these systems, inherently inefficient. So we're talking about 100 units of that resource going in at the resource side. We're only getting about one unit of energy service out. We can do better, we have to do better because what humans really care about are these services, the energy services, our charging, our lighting, our heating, our transportation. And in order to provide those kind of services to everyone worldwide, we've got to do it in a way that's more efficient and less damaging to our planet. And fossil fuels are really where we are today. So our energy system landscape has been changing, especially more recently. So we are seeing more renewables and things like that in our systems, but it's still dominated by fossil fuels. Energy consumption, it's over 80% for our world electricity. It's still at 60%. We have a long way to go to decarbonize our systems. And why do we care? What's so important about energy? We care about energy for economic reasons, geopolitical reasons, the environment, health, ethical and equity reasons. There's lots of reasons we care about energy. So just to highlight a couple of those. One is modern energy access is really highly correlated with quality of life. It's really important for human development. So this chart is showing you human development index compared to electricity consumption per capita. You can see on the low end, a little bit more access to electricity consumption can really drive people up in terms of quality of life. It's really important that modern energy access is really important for quality of life. And of course, there are all sorts of reasons that the energy system is impacting our environmental and social systems. These are just a list of the few. And I wanted to give you a sense that it's our energy systems impact everything from land to air to wildlife to water, both right now and intergenerationally and that it happens all through that energy system. We have to think about these as systems in terms of the resource extraction, the transportation, and the end use. There are impacts all along this. And those are things that we have to be thinking about when we're thinking about how do we get those energy services we want. And of course, big elephant in the room, climate change. Why are we looking at particularly decarbonizing our energy systems? Why are we looking at efficiency so much? It is climate change. 75% of the greenhouse gas emissions are from our energy systems. And so to provide those energy services we need, we've got to find better ways. All right, so that's the big picture of why we care, what's happening, but let's talk about what's changing because that's the exciting stuff. And there's things that are changing rapidly and investment going into these sectors to make changes. The good news I will tell you is that we have solutions to almost all of these sectors. Some of them are very mature solutions. Some of them are a little bit more early stage solutions, but we have solutions. A lot of what we need to do is implementation of solutions. That's where a lot of the challenge lies. But you can see the investment needed, and this is just one study, is not insignificant. Talking about $32 trillion over the next decade as we transition our way to net zero by 2050. It's a significant investment in especially implementation of solutions. So where are we now? Investment in energy transitions is growing, continuing to grow. It actually has passed up investment in fossil fuels, which is a milestone. Last year, we invested $2 trillion in global energy transitions. So we're putting investment there, but if you can do the math, at $2 trillion a year, we're not getting to that $32 trillion in the next decade. It's not quite fast enough. So we've got to do more. What are some of the revolutions we're seeing? What are some of the energy transitions? Something you may have heard about is this push to electrify everything. What does that mean? It's looking at our, our 
energy systems in our buildings and our transportation? Can we provide that with electricity, which is an energy carrier that diversifies the resources we can use? And so what I'm showing you in this chart is one way to think about that. I showed you that our, our energy systems in terms of coal and oil for those services, very inefficient. And so when you're looking at the fossil fuel burning that we're actually doing, the energy we're using, versus how much energy we actually get out, it's a much lower number. That's the actual energy that we're using from burning those fossil fuels. If we electrify, we get improved efficiency in our services, so we can provide more of those services with less energy. We can diversify our resources, which can be important for energy security. You can have domestic resources, and it gives us this opportunity to decarbonize because using a electricity allows us to use a variety of decarbonized resources to provide that electricity. So it actually lowers the endpoint that we're getting to and gives us a diversity of resources. Pretty magical. So what does that look like? All right, so you guys have heard about electrification of buildings and transport, you know, electric vehicles. I just wanted to give you some, some cool facts about this uh, electrification transition that is happening. Electric vehicles, um, I'm sure you're all familiar with them now or have seen them. Um, they require three to four times less energy compared to conventional gas powered cars. So if you're looking at it a car by car basis, that is powerful because again, if we're trying to provide energy services that people want, we've got to do it in, in ways that require less, less energy up front. Heat pumps, heat pumps are magical. I'm putting here 300 to 400% efficient. That sounds like it is an unreal number. But what that really is, is heat pumps move heat instead of creating heat. And so by moving heat, we can put a lot less energy in to move a lot more energy around. Furnaces, electric resistance heaters, they can only get so efficient because they're creating heat. Heat pumps move heat. So they're much more efficient. And so we're seeing an expansion of heat pumps in buildings to do both heating and cooling of our buildings. And then renewable energy is one of those transitions that's taking off because it is cheaper and typically uh, easier to permit than a lot of our other options. So just to give some examples of the, how those renewables are taking off, this is showing you for the United States, but solar is actually the fastest growing energy resource globally by far. Um, you can see globally it grew 186% over the 2018 to 2023 timeframe. And this is showing you additions for all new utility scale electricity generation in the US, dominated by solar and battery storage. And batteries, batteries are magic too. So batteries give us this flexibility and reliability on the grid, make it easier to integrate all sorts of different resources and demand onto the grid. And the magic that's happening with batteries right now is that even pairing batteries with our wind turbines or with our solar farms is cheaper in the United States than running existing coal or nuclear power plants. And so that is, that is market changing. So we can have near firm, they call this near firm four hour wind storage or four hour solar storage. So kind of daily storage added to those systems and it's cheaper than running our existing coal and nuclear. And so we're seeing this huge transition in our electricity system in the United States. And then globally, battery storage is growing dramatically. Uh, we're seeing a lot of that growth happening in China, which is growing in all of these different areas. And then there's emerging tech. You're hearing about this as emerging tech on geothermal, where geothermal is, is making use of horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing revolution from oil and applying it to geothermal. So we're seeing expansion of where geothermal can be economic. Hydrogen is, is looked at as a potential to decarbonize a lot of different systems, transportation, energy storage. Um, there's a lot of different things there. It's really an economic challenge and how do we get hydrogen cost competitive with the alternatives. Carbon capture and storage is something we've been looking at for a long time. We know how to do it. It's also an economic challenge but most of the predictions really show that it needs to be part of the solution if we're really gonna to get to net zero or even net negative emissions uh, globally. And then fusion, fusion's getting a lot of attention right now. There's a lot of startups, there's new designs, uh, a lot of money going in and betting on, on fusion as this uh, 
fast, um, decarbonize energy resource. So a lot of exciting things to look forward to in our energy systems. So we know these revolutions are happening. When I started studying energy 20 years ago, they were not, and they are now. And so it's really exciting. The question is how fast are they gonna happen and how fast can we make them happen? So this is just one future cast from Bloomberg. Um, I would say the particulars in terms of what the mix is, is an important, but the pace, the rate that we have to get to net zero is really what we need to focus on. And we can make the future be what we want it to be. It may not be this exact mix, but we have a lot of solutions. We've just got to implement them. All right. So that was my 10 minute presentation on accelerating energy transitions. Um, if you want to know more, we have a full lecture posted on the Understand Energy Learning Hub. You can go to the Under Understand Energy Learning Hub and check out other topics and get more in depth than that. Um, and I encourage you to check out our newsletter, which is just a bite-sized learning on energy topics that shows up in your inbox once a month.